Hey everybody, uh, it's Bust with Battles with Bust number 32. Uh, today we're going to be playing a little bit of Ezreal, Caitlyn, Control. And so, uh, yeah, before we jump in, let's uh, let's talk about the 3-5 patch a little bit. There's nothing uh, that actually happened in terms of new cards. Uh, you know, no balance changes happened, no new cards were added, nothing like that. Uh, it is kind of an interesting patch in that the next one coming up will be a champion update, and it says that they're specifically uh, going to be messing with Udyr, LeBlanc and Garen, uh, and all in all, I think that's pretty interesting and cool. Uh, that's that's one of the things that I do love about uh, the the Legends of Runeterra is they have kind of toned back on the um, uh, the the frequency of the the balance updates, which is fine. But uh, the, the problem I always had as a as a gamer is you know I. Uh, I, I grew up as a magician uh, where there were just like never changes, right? It's really challenging to uh, apply a balance update to a piece of paper. <laughs> and so, uh, yes, I, I did go through some various stages of uh, formats to where cards would get banned and rotations and stuff like that. But in terms of just uh, general balance, it just didn't exist. Uh, you, if a, a set came out and something was broken, uh, you were just kind of stuck with it, uh, you know, for the next three months or until the next set of cards came out, or if Wizards actually decided to ban something. I know that they've gotten uh, a little bit more liberal in banning things these days, but there is, you know, a real cost associated with banning cards in Magic. You may have paid, uh, you know, $30 a piece for that Mythic. Uh, you had to get four copies of it, so you're out $120, and then it just gets banned, and you can't use it anymore, and you're out that money. And so, uh, you know, moving into the digital landscape, that isn't as big of a deal anymore. Sure, if you're uh, playing Hearthstone, then that was uh, a place where you had to spend money. Uh, but if, if they did errata a card or ban a card or whatever, Blizzard was pretty good about refunding back the cost of that card. And so, uh, you know, they Blizzard really did have the opportunity to, to get out there and, and make a bunch of balance changes. They were not particularly aggressive with it. And, and for me, that was kind of annoying. I know that we I play the game a lot more than your, uh, your standard person. Uh, everybody that hits Legend or Mythic or uh, what are we in this game? Are we in uh, not Challenger? <laughs> I don't know. What, what Masters, there we go. We got to Masters in this one. We, we just play the game a lot. And so uh, the, the format tends to get a little stale for me. It did get pretty old with Hearthstone. It was like the new cards would come out and that was great. Uh, then the next month would roll around and it was kind of boring, but things were still fresh. Uh, the third month would roll around. Blizzard may or may not make a change at that point. They typically didn't. Uh, and then, you know, you basically just played to hit uh, Legend and quit, and then the fourth month you'd hit Legend after two weeks and then just play a different game. Uh, and so I was really interested and excited with the, the way that, uh, that, that Riot did intend to come out here and uh, make these updates frequently. Uh, I, I can agree that two weeks is probably too much, uh, both from the balance perspective and the, the mental gymnastics it takes to keep up with everything. But uh, I think there's a, a really uh, great potential here in a set being released. A month goes by, they make a balance patch. A month goes by, a new set is released. And a month goes by, and they do one of these champion balances where we see uh, they're looking to, to give some attention to Udyr, LeBlanc, and Garen. And so uh, I think that's all well and good and great. I, I love to see that these things come about. Uh, with the, the game being so free-to-pray friendly, it does feel like they have a lot of uh, room and, and openness to go and uh, and make the updates to these champions. And so, I mean, some of the same stuff still applies, right? It does kind of suck if you're a big, uh, you know, Garen supporter and you buy the Garen skins and then they just nerf him to Oblivion and you don't get to use your skins anymore. Uh, I get it, that sucks, but... Uh, I'm really all for uh, aggressive and frequent balance changes. Uh, I know I'm in the minority of people that play the game a shitload, but uh, for someone like me, it is kind of nice. Uh, the second thing I did want to call out here, this is the important one. This is the big one. Uh, I often have frequent conversations with the intern, because you all know uh, the the head dev, whoever he was, the uh, the, the Asian guy that was in all the videos, he left Riot, so we can't blame him for anything anymore. Uh, Deadbolt Doris and, uh, and Ruben Zhu are the typical 
uh, people that we lay the blame on now. The music sucks, blame Ruben Zhu. If uh, the, the animation sucks, blame Deadbolt Doris. If they made us watch a bunch of animations or change Path of Champions, everything, just actual everything is their fault when everything goes wrong. Uh, and so here, uh, we like to talk to the intern. I told the intern multiple times, uh, the game is fucked up, the game is broke. Uh, you need to get out here and fix it. I even came out here and made a Reddit post on it. So you can see it right here, old FTP post making the post. Rocket Barrage, Celestial Wonder, and Desert Duel cannot be turned prismatic. And so I don't like to take full credit for everything. Uh, I'm sure the, uh, the intern heard what we said in a few videos, ran it straight up the flagpole. The intern went straight up to Deadbolt Doris and said, bruh, bruh, the game is literally unplayable. You cannot turn Rocket Barrage prismatic. And he says, oh shit, that one was my fault. I'm sorry, dude. I failed as a developer. Everything going on in this game is my fault. And so I, I failed. I can't let it happen. And then if we look at the patch notes, uh, our, our cries of pain and suffering have been heard. The prismatic versions of Desert Duel, Celestial Wonder, and Rocket Barrage are now available. Look at that. The intern finally listened. He told everyone it has been done. Uh, all thanks to us. That was all us. No one else reports bugs. No one else saw that. No one in the QA team said, oh shit, you can't, uh, you can't do this and we're losing out on money. The intern heard it here, took it straight up the flagpole. Shit got done. Uh, you're welcome. That's all on us. And so that is what brings us back here to Caitlin Ezreal. Uh, we've made a video on this in the past. This is a fairly similar list to what we played there. Uh, but we do have to come out here and make uh, pay homage to the Rocket Barrage. And so <laughs> I can assure you we're about to go and turn this premium, uh, and this is going to be at the forefront of what we're playing in our deck today. And so uh, this is a uh, fine control deck. I, I don't think it is uh, at the top of the meta. I do think it is one of the uh, better decks that you can choose to take into Gauntlet and Best of Three when you can come out here and actively ban uh, things like the Sun Disk. Uh, the problem with this deck, it gets annihilated by the Sun Disk. This has something like uh, a 35 or a 40% win rate against the Sun Disk, which is pretty bad. Now, uh, granted, the play rate on the Sun Disk is starting to dip. Uh, it's dropping down, uh, was up in like the 20s, it's down in the teens now. Uh, I don't feel like we've even played against it in the past few videos or so. Uh, and so we do start to see the rise of things like Ezreal Caitlin, the rise of the various Aphelios decks uh, now being more uh, common control options that's now that they aren't running into the Sun Disk over and over again. And so feels pretty good uh, to be out here running around with this today. I, I do kind of like the idea of Rocket Barrage. Now, granted, we are just kind of out here playing it for the memes today, uh, but there are worlds where it can be good. Now, that world is particularly where Bandle City is good. Uh, if you're able to Rocket Barrage down a Lulu and then kill uh, a Boom Baboon or kill some... Uh, uh, daring Poros, like that would be the thing out of the Yordles and Arms deck, if you're able to take down some Conchologist type units while you kill a Gnar, like there's lots of very good plays that you could be, be making with Rocket Barrage, uh, but it tends to want to be focused on these kind of like go wide board control style decks. Uh, and so this is a card that, you know, you're looking for kind of a specific meta for it to be good. Will we make some great usage out of it today? That will be seen, but um, that is, uh, you know, kind of the, the stickler with Rocket Barrage. They did specifically put it in the game to help combat Bandle City. Uh, with all of the changes they made to Bandle City, they've been kind of, I won't say nerfed into oblivion. I don't feel like that's a fair statement. Uh, also, as I do think that the, uh, the Yordles in Arms deck is just in the top tier of decks. So it's not like they're completely gone. But that is why the Rocket Barrage was added to the game. Otherwise, you know, we, it's just a really heavy control deck style thing. You're, you're trying to just stop your opponent uh, uh, until you can get your flipped Ezreal. And then once you have the Ezreal flipped, it's usually pretty academic in closing out the game. And so just going to sit around, play removal spells on our opponent's stuff, get in some chip damage with our smaller units if we can. If we can attack our opponent down to like 12, then it feels like we're really, really uh, just doing things right and strong. Uh, and then you can come in and burn them out. I often look at this as... Uh, similar to the Splinter Twin decks in Magic, uh, and not in terms of this being a combo deck, but uh, you do have plan A, where you know, you're know you playing Splinter Twin in Magic, your plan A was to put the Pester Mike down on your opponent's turn three, and then on turn four, you play Splinter Twin on it, 
and then you combo off and just kill your opponent. But that didn't happen every game, right? You could still find these games to where you're putting uh, Pester Mites on the board, they're attacking in for some chip damage, uh, you're going to play like an Electrolyze, maybe kill a unit and deal a damage to your opponent's face, they're going to take two or three damage from their fetch lands, and then you're sometimes you're just like, oh, cool, I'm playing Snapcaster Mage and Lightning Bolts, so I'm just going to burn you out. Uh, and you do run into quite a few of those games with this. You'll attack a few times with Caitlyn, people don't block her because she has... Uh, uh, quick attack, so you get in for six damage. Maybe you get in some chip damage with your little house spiders. And then you, you know, surprise at the end of the day, you've got your opponent down to like eight, and you just start churning off mystic shots with the Ezreal flip, and you just close out the game like that. And so uh, it, it does kind of have that Splinter 20 feel to it. You are playing the control deck that does have burn spells in it, uh, so you can kind of see that as a uh, additional path to victory, uh, opposed to just being like, well, I'm going to be a control deck, get six targets, get Ezreal down, get double value out of all of my spells. Pretty cool. But nonetheless, that is the deck. Y'all know what we're about to go and do here. We do have to edit it up, find this rocket barrage, leave our mark on the world. Look at that turn and premium. Looking good, looking good. So let's get ourselves into battle. I got a kitty friend with me out here. Everybody loves seeing the kitties. Who that he says, what up, internet? What up? <laughs> Let's get it in here. I have the gauntlet thing pulled up. I was really hype about coming out and playing some gauntlet today. Uh, I wanted to do um, uh, a gauntlet with scouts with the, the, the rally deck that we played uh, in the previous video and then action siver. But uh, you can't play Gauntlet today, so <laughs> that uh, that kind of aced that ideal real quick. And okay, pretty reasonable start. I am pretty okay with hanging on to a Scorched Earth here up against Victor Vi. Uh, Vi in particular is a challenging champion to take down. Uh, and so if we just put a piece of damage on Vi, take her down with Scorched Earth, that is pretty good. Uh, otherwise, we could get rid of Ezreal, but I, I feel like we're going to be doing a lot of passing here in the early game. And it shouldn't be too tough for us to get uh, the, the spell mana banked up and then start casting these Mystic Shots pretty early. Oh yeah, buddy, these are some top-notch scratches. <laughs> this cat, they haven't been, the kitties haven't been hanging out too much. This is two videos in a row where the kitties have shown up. Uh, he, he's pretty annoying in terms he just comes up here and just starts headbutting my hand. But, <laughs> you know, it's not that, not that bad. He's a, he's a sweetheart of a kitty. All right, we'll come in and just take the ballistic bot down. It is kind of nice to, to just start getting the, uh, or, or stop him from getting the, the bonus attacks in or the bonus pings in. Uh, it's not unrealistic for them to get like five or six damage in off the ignitions. And then you're now in the space to where you get OTK'd by ambush. But here... Caitlyn does kind of get in the way of our uh, our game plan. I'm still going to drop her here, but uh, we're, we're definitely not just using Ezreal now. But this is still a pretty decent curve, right? We can Arachnoid Sentry the Ballistic Bot, get in a good attack, Ravenous Flock onto the Ballistic Bot, and then we're still looking pretty strong. As we start to get some of these Puff Caps on the board or Flashbang Traps, uh, does give us some additional opportunities to hit for the point of damage and then... Uh, scorched Earth something. Perfection. Here we come, my dude. You got Victor? Nope. Sweet. Not used to seeing the Eye of the Dragon. I guess it makes sense when they're playing Ionia. Uh, but this kind of like strikes me as the card as to being good. Uh, against the matchups you should already be beating. Okay, let's try and take down the Ballistic Bot. Maybe shut down the Eye of the Dragon a little bit. I do assume that he's going to play another spell this turn, but it is nice to get the spell generation off the board as he's played the Eye of the Dragon. Mmm. Mmm, spicy. Okay. The, the first little dragon link's not that bad. And then as I talk about the Eye of the Dragon, uh, usually the first one is manageable. If they get two of these, then you, you typically just lose the game. But we at least have some interactive elements for these things to where we can uh, take them down. System upgrade. Uh, 
let's see. Let's see if we can't get this bro out of here. Is he gonna? Is he gonna have some more? Uh, some more twin disciplines? Oh, it's a deny. Okay. So sure. Why not? Gets us up to four targets with Ezreal. He's getting pretty close to flipping. Now, one of, the, one of the downsides here is we don't have, like, tons of card advantage. I've never been a fan of Whispered Words just because it's so slow. But you do see a lot of decks playing it. We're not playing it here today. Uh, and th but this is one of the spaces where it would be nice to have access to one. The world's a big place. Let's see all of it. About to get boomed, Ezreal. Today may not be your day. There is a world where you want to stop and protect him from getting hit with the likes of a, uh, a get excited, but I think it's fine here. The area. Then just a hit with Caitlyn. I don't want to play a removal spell onto uh, the Dragonling. That feels pretty low value, so. Moving on. Okay, that could that could be pretty important. Hitting the, uh, the 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 trap lets us now peacemaker the, the eye of the dragon. Don't have to use our scorched earth. And this is the kind of board as to where I'm talking about. You know, we, we can get pretty close to just barding him out if we're hitting for uh, uh, eleven. All right. Well. Oh, fuck, he hit lifesteal. That's annoying. Okay. Let's go ahead and put the damage on him. We're going to have to Scorched Earth the victor, but uh, not a ton we can do about this. Oh, man. Didn't, didn't need to use it, per se. Uh-oh. This is going to be the world's best rocket barrage. We're, uh, we're going to boom them so hard, aren't we? <laughs> uh, Alright. Let's pop the donger. Step one. Barrage the donger. Are we going to get to step two here? Man, this is like... Uh, with, with the rocket barrage, it, it feels like... Uh, it would have been pretty nice to try and pop the turrets. He's not going to have access to any turrets here, so it's not that big of a deal. But uh, this AoE is pretty good against the Donger. Since we killed his unit, he doesn't get the recall either. Now he also has to fade a trap uh, on, on the Heimerdinger. Boom. Get wrecked, bruh. <laughs> there we have it. GG. Hey. Satisfactory, outcome. satisfactory outcome. All right, all right, good stuff. We did it. Feels so good. I had a. <laughs> we did it. There I was. I had a. I had a programming professor in college, and that was always his his go to phrase. Uh, whenever you're in uh, Computer Science 101 and you're making your first Hello World program, he didn't do Hello World. He did We Did It. And so <laughs> you, we are learning the old visual basic. And he is uh, making us put the little buttons on the screen. You push the button and it says, We Did It. <laughs> okay. He also said, now, granted, I I can understand this, right? Uh, in the program I was in, there was a lot of non-technical people being forced to take a programming class, which I think is good. Uh, you could most definitely uh, learn to automate portions of your job. Don't tell your boss you did it. Just do it. Um, and then... Uh, you know, make life easier. It's it's just like, I kind of feel like uh, as people of my age grew up having to learn about things like Excel and Microsoft Word and just being uh, expected to know how that stuff works, I, I think to a large degree here, the future people are just going to be expected to know how to program. But at any rate, uh, we, we're, we're starting to diverge from the, uh, the, the issue. But I was in the, the programming class with my brother. Uh, he was a non-technical person, but uh, the, the like second or third assignment of the year, 
the professor was like, okay, uh, you're going to go and just copy everything. You're going to copy this program out of the book and uh, get, it to, get it to compile, make the buttons work. You're going to turn it in and be done. And so that's, that's what we did. You know, the professor says, go uh, copy paste the, the program directly out of the book, make sure it runs. And so we did it. And then he calls us up at the end of the class the next day, and he's like, uh, you two cheated. And we're like, what? And he's like, you cheated. Uh, I look at your program. They are exactly the same. Uh, you cheated. And we're like, uh, excuse me, bro. Let's roll back a little bit here. You know, the assignment that you gave us was to copy-paste this straight out of the book and get it to run. And now you're surprised that both of our programs look exactly the same because they were both copy pasted directly out of the book and this ideal apparently just completely blew his mind and he's like oh okay okay i can understand that uh but i'm watching you now i'm watching you for cheating <laughs> it's like fucking okay bro all right we we're definitely cheating here because we copy pasted this right out of the book just as you said to do We got out of that. Turns out we did not cheat the rest of the semester on the programs that you had to write on your own. <laughs> they did not look exactly the same. Fucking wonder why. <sighs> Life is tough. All right, anyways, I got into story mode. We're losing track of the game here. We're playing against pirates. Uh, it's not uh, an entirely fantastic matchup. Uh given our draw here. This is a matchup that should be good frequently, but uh, he, he's kind of come out the gates at us here pretty fast. Not a lot we can do about it. So we're getting into defensive mode. Things are starting to turn around. If we can get a static shock here early to stop misfortune, that'll be pretty good. Uh, he's probably going to open on us with a board like this in the scouts, but uh, we're, we're making progress. Usually don't recommend just attacking with these do-nothing units, but uh, we, we have to stop the damage out of the scout unit. Okay, I think we can do it like this. We're going to go ahead and just pop Misfortune. This will let us uh, just play a unit before we have to attack, and, or before he gets to attack. And so it's kind of stressful like if he has a gangplank in hand this is like really terrible and so i think we just go ahead and pass now if he hits us for three damage like whatever but right here's the gangplank we can't have that happen okay go to 11 plus or 10 there was a powder keg it's a little scary. We're starting to get down into like decimate range, which is uh, not not a great place to be. But how are we going to do this? It's like if one of these scorched earths was a ravenous flock, we would have been pretty okay with our stun spiders. But not getting these stuns is kind of a pain. We need to get a damage onto gangplank so we can scorched earthy. That's like the space we're in now. I think we can add Caitlyn. And probably get an attack here. Then if he doesn't block, uh, doesn't block any of our units with the gangplank. I was like, oh shit, are you just going to put the damage down? Uh, then we can look to mystic shot him before the turn passes. Do we rather, let's do the peacemaker. He does have some legitimate targets. Uh, for our flashbang traps. You know, if he hits a prowling cutthroat, that'll be pretty good. And then also, uh, you know, if it just hits a jagged butcher, it gives us another option for a scorched earth. Interesting, he overwrites the. Oh, he doesn't have misfortune anymore. I guess it's not as interesting as I thought. Okay. Here comes the damages. So, like, we're most certainly going to Scorched Earth uh, onto Gangplank. Got the Mystic Shot as the other option we can use for the turn. Don't have to worry about him having any positive combat tricks. 
but we're about to get boomed right after this. Falling to three, probably just going to get killed by Decimate here. Wouldn't be surprised to see a Nox and Fervor come down like this. We were just way too slow this game. We have to be starting off with the early Mystic shots and stuff, and when we mulliganed into a bunch of expensive units, it's kind of a problem. Sure. GG. I think we did. I don't. I don't fully remember the mulligan. I was in. I was in full on story mode there. <laughs> it happens sometimes. All right, here we go. But that should be a fairly decent matchup if you uh, draw your deck in the right order. That was going to be a choice rocket barrage. That's where we needed the rocket barrage. Okay, the Elise burn deck. So let's see. Let's hang on to Caitlyn. Uh, she just does a little bit of everything in this matchup. She can block Elise. She can uh, get the traps going, shut down the smaller units. Picking up the two Scorched Earths, not ideal. But both Ezreal and Station Archivist are expensive cards, right? You don't want to really, you don't really want to be playing Station Archivist on turn three, and then just having it uh, uh, miss out on the spell. This is painful, man. This is the second game in a row where we can't really answer the one drop. I think I want to go ahead and use the Peacemaker. Uh, it, it's not like a, a gigantic chance to hit on these traps, but in this hand with two Scorched Earths, we really need something to hit. We can't just be sitting around with the two dead cards. Uh, and so let's at least at least go for it. It's down to two mana left. I think we need to go with the Sentry. Keep Elise back. This will keep him from generating the spider. I assume he's going to follow up with another unit, but if he plays like a random 3-2 here, we can just block and kill it. Okay, interesting. Really surprising to see them pass with a 2-bank. I wouldn't be surprised to see them have, like, another Elise in hand. Well, if they had another Elise, they probably would have just... Um, probably would have hit us with the, the Spiderlings. Interesting. Pretty awkward hand. So do we do we ever? It's like I, I kind of want to drop the rocket barrage here. So say it's like we rocket barrage the skitterer, or would we rocket barrage the Elise? I'm just looking at being able to get a ravenous flock and take down the the rear guard while we're at it. I think this is okay. Right, so now we do at least get some damages out here for this Scorched Earth. He says, oh shit, Bust is bringing the premium rocket barrage. <laughs> oh my gosh, my dude. Only take three? That feels pretty decent. Like, does he really want to play Brothers Bond here? That sounds terrible. Apparently he does. Okay. All right, things are looking up. We do, this would be a good space to draw, like, a Station Archivist or something. Just some, something to get our units going. It's not the end of the world to pick up more removal, but... Uh-oh. Send in the Decimates already. That's not awesome. Okay, there's Ezreal. And the awkward thing with this is we kind of need to... Uh, like, if he plays a unit, we kind of have to hit it with a, a, a Mystic Shot if we want to use the Scorched Earth. But just Doom Beast is okay. Is that, I was going to say, is the Doom Beast what he just hit with the, uh... uh it'd be awkward if that's what he just hit with the, the card draw thing. 
Dropping another house spider is not ideal, but kind of manageable. Is that ephemeral? Yep. Alright, he's tapped out. Let's come out here and prevent the damage where we can. He's going to take us to four. Uh, I, I certainly want to be blocking this house spider with Ezreal. Four is a little bit safer, given that we can't get killed by a Noxus Blast. We still die to a Decimate, but uh, just prevent the damage where we can. We don't need the value uh, from getting these Spiderlings off the board. Can maybe get some use out of this entry. Like, he, he doesn't do anything on this board. Uh, and so I, I think we can just wait. Like, if he plays Captain Farron next turn, I would like to be able to stun him. He's just going to play a second dog, but I think I want to keep getting in the damage. We can answer it. We have a stun and we have a mystic shot. We getting there? Noxus Blast to one. Really awkward hand <laughs> that we can't play the uh, the tri beam or the scorched earths. Interesting, interesting. Why would you just concede here? You can still still hit uh, a decimate or something next turn. I guess you do just die there, you know, frequently. But that was a, a bit of an early concession. You could also pick up a doom beast. Right, we were hitting for earth for five. And then we'd get a Mystic Shot that would hit for three, so we'd only hit for eight, take him to four. Uh, then we were kind of counting on him. I was sitting here just like thinking in my brain piece how we could get a, a Tra Beam onto something and then hit it with a Scorched Earth just so that we could cast two spells. But didn't need it. Sometimes you get that concession. Uh-oh, he's bringing out the Caitlyn skin. Scary. That's scary. We can start with these, with the flock and the and the sentry. It's tough in the mirror. Like, I, I wonder... I haven't played a ton of the mirror. I wonder if we should just be mulliganing for our value cards, right? So the Ferris Financier, the House Spider, uh, the Station Archivist. And then just assume that we're going to get removal for everything else. I think I like this. Opponent went full hand as well. Things like Tri-Beam should be pretty important to pick up here. Ooh, a second Tri-Beam this early in the game? That's pretty cool. I'm thinking I just want to take this. Oh, it was our attack token anyways. Uh, it's like, I want to get the three bank with the Station Archivist. Great. <laughs> and whiff. Okay, I'm going to just lead with this uh, this shot onto the Spiderling. Uh, I don't feel like we're, we're going to have like tons of success with this, uh, this attack next turn, but uh, this gives us a shot to have a good attack here. He's just going to hit her with like a Scorched Earth or a Ravenous Flock or something, but that's not horrible. you got financer not really interested in any of these the unlicensed innovation can be okay uh, just just to have the stats kind of leaning towards just the hex tech anomaly hmm. 
Yeah, stay true shot barrage. <laughs> that's that's what we would love to have this upcoming turn. We are starting to take pretty healthy chunks of damage here. It's a little a little scary. Not big scary. This feels like so early to drop a tri-beam. But we don't have much else going on. It, it doesn't seem like real great here to just drop Ezreal on the board. Interesting. <laughs> Interesting Greenglade Elder when we have uh, three units in hand. Sunk cost. Sunk cost ready to... Ready to boom something? Ah, oh, it's not happening. Not happening. Look at that, you hit the spell. Must feel good. I assume Ezreal's just gonna get aced here. Very good chance he gets hit with like a, a stun spider plus a ravenous flock or something, but it does feel a little bit safer now that he's up to four health. Gets out of the, uh, the three damage spell range. You usually see get excited coming out of these decks, but uh, it's non non zero chance it's there. Okay. Watch and learn. Sure. All right, Captain Fair, and I'm ready for you to go down. Get on this board. Get the the plus one plus one bonuses, so we can outdo his Captain Fair. Okay, uh, I want to spend all the mana that we can this turn. Because we're realistically just playing Captain Farron over the next two turns. And so let's get a stun. We're going to play an Improbulator. Uh, and then next turn we'll open with a Captain. Atrocity. I wish. I wish, Atrocity. That'd be sweet. <laughs> he says, oh, fuck. My Captain Farron's only an 8-8. Eight, eight. Oh, fuck. Get in for six. Do we ever want to take down the station archivist? I kind of like it. Going to be at 14 next turn. Protect our bigger unit here. Just get a, a little bit of board presence. It does suck. Like, it would feel a lot better if we were able to spend, like, a Piltover Peacemaker or something that couldn't go face. But we have a, a very real board he's going to have to deal with now. Yeah, here reinforcements. We've hit we've hit like so many cool cards with this the hextuck anomaly just at the wrong time every time. How close is his to flipping? One away, same as ours. Hey, good looking. Back at ya. Don't want his to get going, so. I think playing ours is safe. We seem to be in, like, a pretty good spot. Like, even if this turn comes down to, like, he attacks, we, like, block Mystic Shot his Ezreal. Ooh, he's got a giant Tri-Beam. Okay. Manageable. So he's going to get to Mystic Shot something. We're just going to have the two units on board. We need 
we need to block his Karina with our four attack unit. Looks like he's gonna have a card. We need to block his Karina with our three attack unit. Uh, we gotta. That's gonna be where Captain Fair is, is trying to hit through, and so every damage we deal to Karina is one more damage our Captain Fair and will uh, will hit for. I think we're done here. He's only got one card in hand, so we might be okay. Uh, but the Captain Farron's going to be a little short on damage. He's only going to be hitting for four. Hmm, Ravenous Flock, though. That's like a four damage burn spell at this point. No. <laughs> no. Okay. F. Well, we probably are dead now. But we have all these decimates. Maybe maybe we'll just be too fast for him. Here's where this can be problem. If he hits a, a trap. Fuck. I guess, I guess Harsh Winds is about as interesting as a pickup as we could find here, though. Uh, it shuts down his Ezreal from getting a, uh, from from getting the Mystic Shot. So not playing any units, never adding a unit to the sport. I. Let's get in there, cards. He can play... Most of these say enemy, right? No, deal two to a unit. So... Oh, we got it! <laughs> nice! I wonder. I was wondering if he was just going to uh, to chain off a bunch of spells onto his Karina uh, to, to get the win with Ezreal, but... Not today. Not today. GG. That's a scary trap beam, though. Like, his was up to nine. And we kind of low-rolled on ours, hitting the 4-3, but... Uh, that was what I thought that game was going to come down to, was just um, hitting a good trap beam, which we, we did not. We we had to spend hours much earlier than I wanted to. Uh, but here, this matchup is abysmal. We, we need to really get in and get in front of our opponent. And so I'm going to try and do our aggro thing here, be as aggressive as we can uh, with the Pharaoh's Fancier and the, uh, the Caitlyn. Yeah, I was just playing Turbo Sun Disc here. This is the the deck that kind of like the the way that people initially played the Sun Disc before they uh, really tuned it to better versions. It's, it's kind of uh, an older version of the deck. All right, what are we doing here? I kind of like the progress day, although there is the unlicensed innovation as the way to just kind of slam in damage. I think we. Might get it down. Okay. How bad is it if Caitlyn gets the hook on her? Let's just drop the fancier. Uh, okay. Glorious evolution is interesting. That's a that's a way to chunk in tons of damage potentially. I have to see if we can't get this going on turn 7. Man, we, we we haven't hit the uh the scorched earth. I'm used to seeing the soothsayers come down by this point, but it's it's painful just seeing the the sun disk sit here. I wonder if we shouldn't have uh played the archivist this turn instead. Just try a little bit harder to uh take the sun disk down. All right, well, maybe, maybe. There's the Scorched Earth. 
Hopefully we aren't too far behind for this plan now. Just deal with it while we can. We we can recover from this part. He's about to flip the Zerath. That's fine. Uh, we, we can answer him, but the Sun Disk is the big problem. Ready to block. Bringing in the Zareth. Don't mind to put a couple points of damage on you, my dude. Get that ravenous flock going. Maybe, maybe more likely we get this rocket barrage going, am I right? Never see it coming. Never see it coming. <laughs> I wonder if he ever just passes. If he passes, we can pass back. Okay. I was ready to ready to see that incoming trap hit the Zerath. That would have felt kind of nice, but we didn't get it. So glad we don't have to watch the level 3 animations. Get it? Ah, oh, I didn't get it. Soothsayer, that's a little a little more problematic at this point. We have to deal with the Zerath here. Uh, and so... It's not that bad if he attacks, so... Let's do it this way. We want the, the Peacemaker to, to get the, the traps into the deck, so let's put the Ravenous Flock as the first one, the one to get Spell Shielded, and we'll follow up with the, the Peacemaker. And we're going to take a bit of damage this turn, but nothing too, uh, too worrisome. They aren't really good at dealing damage to you. They have to, uh, they, they have to come in and get uh, a bunch of their units on board. Or get, they usually can't uh, deal a bunch of damage without the Sun Disk. Okay. Can't play a unit into, into Zerath. It's too much. They're taking quite a bit here. Hopefully he doesn't have the third one. All right, the Pharaoh's fancier. <laughs> we, we can't make the Reckoning play today. If you caught our previous video, we got completely annihilated by the Reckoning. Uh, we can do it. We can play the 5-5 the, the five, five unit and then look to Reckoning next turn. The The thing with this, that line is we still need to pop the, uh, pop the spell shield off of Azir. But I think this looks powerful enough. Like, just having this big unit on board is, is painful for them to deal with anyways. Uh-oh, he's getting five attack units. That's kind of lame. Is he just going to kill us with an open? That's certainly uh, on the table. We can hit for ten plus four. We're going to be too slow with this reckoning, aren't we? Hmm. You were just too slow. Well, might get out of it this way. 
This would just take us to one. Okay, well, I'll feel a little better when we get to untap. Oh, you do still get the, the flashbang traps if you hit the Azir. That's interesting. Now, a Scorched Earth. Okay. Like, he, he's got another champion in hand. He's going to get to just re rebuild his Azir, but getting the two-for-one is nice. We need to just get some width on this board. Mm -hmm. Let's see if he's able to keep filling out with units. Really surprised to see him play a Doomkeeper this turn. I guess we are at one. So if he opens, we need to just go ahead and Scorched Earth. Then we might be okay if we can get this improbulator down next turn uh, to to kill a unit and get a blocker. Oh no, we just die to the uh, fuck. We just die to the Azir, right? Because he's going to generate a sand soldier. Maybe he'll do something dumb. <laughs> we, had, we had people concede early today. Maybe maybe he'll just do something dumb, right? Ooh, Azir, Raz. All right, we're dead. All right, that's tough. It's tough. I, I was expecting it to go a little bit smoother once we uh, took the sun disc off the board, but uh, we, we weren't able to, to deal with their, their stats. But not a matchup I'm expecting to win. Again, That's that, that, the, the sun disc deck is what has really pushed uh, the likes of Ezreal Caitlyn uh, down in, in availability. It's just uh, back when everyone was in Herder, I'm going to play the Shuriman Cars mode. Uh, <laughs> that it uh, 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 really pushed the control decks out of the format. What you got? Leading with the Fizz? Sure thing. I want to see a trick. No, don't really want to attack here. They're pretty good at just refilling out the board. I'm just gonna pop off the smaller unit or the bigger unit here with the peacemaker. Get the traps rolling into this deck a little bit, uh, and we'll see what they do. Right, one of the concepts we talk about a lot is uh, is is uh, attacking into boards to where your opponent can fully refill and you can't. And so, say he has like five units on the board, we get a uh, attack in here. It's very easy for him to then uh, let's just take the four off of Fizz. We can hopefully answer him in a future turn. But, right, we're never going to be out here refilling boards as to where he kind of easily can. Yordle Captain's problematic. This is a unit we have to get rid of. We missed. So slow to go about this with the Ezreal route, but uh, I guess we can let him do it. Our, like We can't hit Fizz with the Static Shock. If he uh, cancels the whole spell, uh, we, we just lose the game at this point. And so we can do Static Shock onto Yordle Captain plus a point to face. Like, the, he still gets to play, like, one unit that way. Mm. I think I'm wanting to attack with the Ezreal, get a Mystic Shot, and then a Ravenous Flock. He's only got one unit to this point. He's most assuredly going to get a second unit. He got in. That was a little scary. I mean, he, he can get elusives a lot of different ways. Well, just do your best, okay? 
but not a mountain of stats. Don't get me wrong, that's pretty bad for us to have to deal with, but it's certainly been worse. Really need to hit some traps at this point, though. We've got four lingering in there. We've played two uh, Peacemakers at this point. It is best unit for him. Interesting. Drop the Pharaoh's Fancier. Uh, I'm kind of leaning towards the assembly line just to get some dudes on board. I think this will be okay. I'm your man. And <laughs> I know you expeditioners aren't used to assembly line, but I think it would be okay here. Now, do we want to just go for it? Uh, if he has a Mystic Shot, this is pretty painful for us. Uh, let's just go ahead and drop a Static Shock. Drop one here, can drop it on the Mayor. Uh, and then threaten blocks on the mayor. Okay. Not terrible. Not terrible. There's the Poro Cannon. Sure. Interesting he hooks in Ezreal. This doesn't seem like he's going to be doing a ton. Oh, is that to get the Fizz damage in? Sure, I guess. Doesn't feel terrible. Watch and learn. Hmm. The, the, uh, I think the fancier, uh, he's not going to be a good attack. It's a, kind of that same spot, right? He's going to get a full board and we can't. So let's, let's just stop there. Not a terrible spot to be in. Sure. Ooh, there's the rocket barrage. Come down, my dude. Bring it. Bring it upon us. <laughs> oh man, are we gonna get get the choice AOEs? Now we're gonna kill all those units first. But how sweet would that have been, right? If we had the rocket barrage and just annihilated his whole team. We still got a shot. We still got a shot for the barrage here. I feel it. I feel you, brother. Watch this. Watch this, everybody. Are you all watching? Are you watching? Let's drop an emote. Yeah. It's so premium. Such a premium rocket barrage. <laughs> nice. It was the uh, it was the emote in conjunction to the premium that's the got him on that one. Pretty good, pretty good. Okay, market a W, move it on. Let's see. That's exactly what I was talking about in terms of the rocket barrage. They they put it in here as a a, a way to help uh, combat the go wide strategies. Uh, it's pretty good against. Uh, Everything Bandle City, it's pretty good against Scouts. Uh, pretty good against the, it's, um, you know, a really uh, aggressive go-wide decks. And it's interesting they added it. Uh, it's one of those things as to where it, it doesn't feel like something you really want in the main deck, but would be kind of an interesting best-of-three card. That's, that's where I see about a lot of this stuff, and it makes me kind of... Uh, kind of kind of sad with the state of Gauntlet and what they could do with it. Like, here, uh, let's keep the two drop. We'll, we'll keep everything that isn't Captain Fair, and I like being able to pop Zoe on the first turn. Uh, and then the, the Mystic Shot's just fine against most of his stuff. But, 
I, I, I wonder how Riot plans to do things. I mean, it, it, it's completely fine to just be like, we don't care about competitive play. Um, I, I think that's kind of the way Magic is pushing things now. The, I don't think Magic is ever just going to completely do away with competitive play. Because that's... Uh, I don't consider... Interesting. Uh, let's just take the progress day. We haven't found the spaces to play these evolutions. Uh, like, Friday Night Magic is such like a, co a core component to the uh, the Magic ecosystem, if you will. Uh, I don't really see competitive play ever completely going away. But, um, you know, now that they've, they've essentially done away with... Uh, the, the Pro Tour and the Grand Prix style stuff. It's not completely gone. I know that there's still some of it there, but the Magic Pro League completely failed and they've been reworking the Pro Tour and uh, cutting all the the, uh, the the payouts and everything. And so uh, it, it's certainly not the high point of focus that it used to be. And uh, I, I think Riot is... Uh, there, there's kind of two pieces to it. I think they're kind of taking the stance of we're going to do something because... You have to have a world championship. Uh, that's what draws a lot of eye, a lot of eyes to your game. And then, regardless of how big your competitive scene is, you can always say, "Oh, well, we have a world championship." Uh, but I also think, to a second degree, that they're uh, probably just looking for the community to do a lot of the work, which is what I think Wizards will eventually push Magic towards. You know, they've they've given a lot of the work to Channel Fireball. There's a lot of the stuff going on uh, just in terms of uh, Star City running their own events. Uh, and I think that Wizards probably gets a lot more bang for their buck and being like, well, we'll just give you money and logistical support. And then uh, we're not going to be the actual maintainers of a lot of the uh, the competitive aspects of the game. And that's what I would really expect Riot to do as well. Is just be like, well, we're not going to deal with maintaining the, uh, the the camera stuff and the talent and, and all of that. We'll make a couple tweets and shit. And otherwise, you know, you're on your own. <laughs> and uh, uh, But anyways, where that all was kind of going is it, it's like Gauntlet is in the game. They're so close to just having tournament stuff in the game right uh, they could get uh, that that's kind of how seasonals is set up uh, it would you know all of the other games have some kind of competitive buy-in format uh, that you can get into uh, like within the game for some kind of reward and so uh, i would like love it to see if they would push some some kind of like tournament event thing into the game because it is kind of a bummer to be like, all right, I'm here to play best of three, but it's not like Friday, Saturday, or Sunday, or whatever the limits are on Gauntlet. Uh, and then it's also... Uh, I, I get not wanting to have best of three ladder. That sounds abysmal. Uh, <laughs> and so the, the solution with Wizards and Magic was we'll just have two ladders that feed into the same thing. And so... Uh, there's the best of one and the best of three ladder, and they both count towards uh, the mythic ranks. Here we can we can just go ahead and rocket barrage. I was hoping to get a higher value one, but it's not it's not going to make itself apparent apparent. Uh, uh, but yeah, it's like a, it's a real bummer today where it's like I can't just jump in a gauntlet and then I can't play tournaments and stuff. Uh, kind of hope to see something like that come into the client. All right, let's kill this Aphelios. We got the four damage beam here, so we can kill through a... Uh, uh, Pale Cascade. Sure. Okay. You hit the wrong one. Come on, trap. We can't can't do the improbulator. Just take the ravenous flock. Yeah, we need our other we need our other big burn spell. Where's our rocket barrage now? Yeah, 
and the Traveler. Sure, we'll still attack with Caitlyn. I think that's a fairly standard attack. If if he didn't have the Sky Shadow on the board, we could consider doing something with the Arachnoid Sentry, but that, that doesn't seem particularly strong. Maybe it is. I do kind of like this. Let's take the trades wherever they fall. He's going to put his 2-1 down here. We can Peacemaker the uh, the Dum Dum here. Help build up our Tribeam a little bit. It's okay. We we do still have this progress day in hand um, to refill a bit. Now, the, the downside to this is, like, we need to win this game fast, right? He's, he's invoked off of the four five or six and hasn't played it he's played the i didn't he's probably not playing the traveler that I, I didn't look to see that's probably what the four five or six hit but he's got two other invokes in hand um, and so i'm not suspecting we're going to get a uh not suspecting we're going to be able to win a late game here if he drops a a big spell shield at overwhelm or something we're just going to lose Get a four cost unit, not the greatest, but something. Hmm, that's, that's a decent little, a decent little role in the benefactor. It is a choice epic. Surprised to see him block and take down the benefactor. Jay Madara. I hate this card so much. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I will. Vent I will just concede to the shell folk. Uh, I guess we can kill it, but I I'm not sitting through this. I, I hate that this card exists as well. This the the shell folk is like right on the borderline of uh, of being a real competitive card. It's not where we're at with Jay Madara, uh, as to where he's he's not. But it it's like the the shell folk. I still don't know what the fuck the shell folk deck is supposed to be trying to do. Uh, I just know it takes forever, and it's no fun to play against. Uh, and, and that's the kind of space that we see with Jay Madara, right? Uh, whatever deck, whatever some card comes about that makes Jay Madara playable, it, it's just going to be absolutely no fun to play with or against. And so uh, I, I don't like cards like Jay Madara existing. You, you see this in Magic as to where uh, a card will be uh, literally unplayable, as people like to say, or... It will um, uh, just be like a ridiculous broken combo deck. Say something like Pyromancer Ascension. Uh, it's just a completely ridiculous combo card, or it's absolutely nothing. And that one landed on the completely ridiculous combo card side of things, and uh, they had problems with Pyromancer Ascension for ages. Eventually just banned it. Uh, I don't know if it got banned and everything, but um, it did start to get removed. And uh, that, that's how I feel about Jay Madara. That's how I feel about Curious Shellfolk. Uh, I, I get who you're trying to kind of design these cards for. But uh, I, I think the the chance of them just being way too good outweighs uh, whatever three people have fun playing with them. <laughs> There's only like three people, right? Maybe two. But we got a unit on the board. I, I feel like... Uh, we might be able to punch in damage here if they just have like a really awkward uh, interactive style hand. He's giving up on Zoe. Not premium, dude. Can be premium now. You chose. You made a decision to not make it premium. Uh, I don't know about people anymore, man. You know? <laughs> the patch came out. This guy had the opportunity. He could have said, I saw the work that Bust did. He talked to the intern. He said, hey, intern, you can't make this premium. And the wrong was righted. But this dude, Ancient Marduk, does not appreciate the work that we did. Uh, and that's, that's kind of fucked up. Kind of fucked up, dude. We did it. We, we put all the work out here so you could have nice things. And then we're like, hey, here's the nice things. they hand it to you right on a platter. And you're just like, no, I don't want it. I don't like it. I don't like nice things. 
Keep it bust. <laughs> Just keep it bust. Ugh, that's kind of scary. I don't have an answer to this currently. Really tempted just to take Glorious Evolution. I mean, there is the Hextech Transmogulator that gives us a permanent answer to this dum-dum. Uh, that's probably the safer way to do it. Sure. The stick has been made pokey. It's like we have these scorched earths and I don't even care enough about the Veiled Temple to try and take it down. <laughs> that's 100% that, that's how I feel about this. It's not, not worth caring about. Oh, fuck. Does he have Celestials in his hand? We can look at it like this. Uh, transform you into you. And then we still lose all of our units. Okay, I think, I mean, we still need to do this. Transform you. I don't want it to fail. Like, he's been playing Pokey Stick, so let's at least um, use one of these two twos. But. Oh, that'd be so sweet if that got countered. Okay. It's like, to, to one degree, it, it sucks that he's hit so many Celestials, but uh, we, we've had answers to all of them, so that's nice. How the fuck do you get progress day? Alright. So like now I'm back to the point, it's like, oh, maybe we need to, to shut down the mana on the Veiled Temple, but I really want to. Maybe he'll just open with progress day and kill his Zoe. <laughs> Ooh, he did have the pokey stick. That came out of the right side of his hand. It may not have been a, a super relevant one, but on the previous turn, but. Okay. We'll wait till he gets into combat before we try to Mystic Shot Zoe. Don't want him to just play a third one. Are we having fun yet? I think that's a valid question. Is anyone in this game having fun? Mm. <laughs> you know. Eh. Alright, there's the Great Beyond. Good job. I don't know. So that's the uh, that's one of my things with the Shell Folk deck as well. Is uh, I, I guess he's playing it. I'm sure he was having some degree of fun over there, but that's what that's what you see with the eggs deck in Magic, is not only do you have to like sit around and babysit them to make sure your opponent doesn't cheat. Uh, whether or not they cheat uh, intentionally or unintentionally, you still have to sit around and watch for it. You have to sit around and say, like, okay, a hundred times, because you can't just, like, tell your opponent that you don't have anything to interact with, or you have to interact with it at just the right spot. And then other times, it's just like your opponent's doing stuff for 15 minutes uh, while, while you're just sitting there. They're just playing <laughs> playing by themselves for, for 15 minutes of the game. And uh, none of those sound very positive to me. But here, we did mulligan into the Sun Disk. We can play this game knowing that. Uh, we can just drop it on the second turn. We're going to have the uh, the even attack token so we can't Soothsayer through this. So we can just go ahead and Scorched Earth. I don't want to uh, miss the opportunity. But yeah, like that's... I don't know how many times we've played against the Curious Shuffle deck. Could not tell you how that deck wins a game. No fucking idea. <laughs> so uh, we've played against it like three or four or five times in Gauntlet, and I, I just don't understand what that deck does. Uh, which I think uh, when we've made it up to Masters and you play against the deck multiple times, you still don't know what it does, and you have absolutely no fun playing against it. It just doesn't belong. Just get rid of it. Ok, 
Okay, well, we'll play this a little slow. Uh, the way that we'll really get boomed this game is if he uh, has the thing in hand that lets him uh, destroy a landmark to, to make the 5-4, the Desert Naturalist, whatever it's called. And so if we kill off the Endless Devout and he hits uh, the Sarcophagus to make the unit, then we're going to be in a, a pretty challenging space. So we'll let that guy just hang out for a bit. Uh, we can just bank through this turn. This is a pretty choice board for... Uh, some some flashbang traps, but I don't think we need to drop them down immediately. Okay. Let's see if he gets them. I'm ready. I'm ready with my Marauders. Fuck. Okay. That's kind of horrible. Would have been nice to counterspell that, but it is what it is. I don't have a ton to do now. What calls zero? Right of Calling? Is that why we're sitting here? Does he have a Right of Calling in hand? He didn't have any mana. Okay, that's not like completely horrible if we uh, overbank three mana this turn. No, it doesn't feel like he's really doing anything. Alright, so he picked up a champion. Zerath would be the scarier of the two. Be pretty close to flipping when the board looks like this. Two of four already. Gonna go to three off the Preservarium. It is the Azir. lead with the spider. I don't want to spend... I want to get, like, something down. I mean, maybe we should have just boomed him for the whole amount, but we only lose one unit here. Okay. Give it a go. Sure. Animations, just what everyone needed. <laughs> you asked for it, you got it. Okay, well, we got all three tri beams in hand now, so we can at least try to spew off a little bit on this board. I, I, I think we're just in a pretty terrible space here, but... I mean, we have the, the three mana Peacemaker to pop the, the Restored Devout. We can, like, Mystic Shot the Clockling. If he starts adding units to the board, none of this really matters that much, but uh, we could potentially chunk in some damage this turn. I think at the end of the day, though, we're probably just going to be paying the, playing the Peacemaker and passing. Thinking on this one real hard. Today's biggest decision, do we let the stun happen? We did. Oh, it doesn't even have full art? Oh man, it's just a circle of art, not a full screen art. I don't know how I feel about that. Who's Kudos Productions? I thought uh, all of the art was done by Six More Vodka. Six more vodka. There we go. Did he disconnect? Is that how? Is that how we can get the win today? <laughs> Sometimes it's not the, uh, the 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 best of strategies, but it is a valid strategy indeed. Might have disconnected. He might have thrown his phone right into the toilet, sitting there taking his work shit. Like th this has to be like the worst work shit deck ever, right? You're sitting there. 
you're, you're taking your dump at work, your 15 minute break, and uh, you, you have to give up like six minutes of your break just watching animations. I can't imagine this is a very popular work shit deck. And so maybe, maybe that's what we ran into here. We did it. Victory is ours. I'm taking it. Mark us up to five and three. Give a big negative to the uh, the Sun Disk deck. It can be beat with uh, with Ezreal Caitlyn. <laughs> and so that's that's going to be it. Uh, we got our eighth game in. Uh, again, uh, th this deck does get trounced by the Sun Disk. You could see that the the two games that we played against the Sun Disk, uh, we managed to uh, scorched earth the Sun Disk in both games. Still, just uh, we we lost the first one pretty handily. Pretty confident we were going to lose that one as well. Uh, it's just a a very 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 tough matchup for this deck, um, and uh, it's never going to stop being a meme. Like I don't know at what point uh, the Sun Disc will fall out of the meta. There's not a really good reason for it to be seeing competitive play. It carries something like a like a forty seven or a forty eight percent win rate. It gets annihilated by. Uh, all of the uh, the Victor decks, uh, and, and I just don't like its existence because it's so polarizing, right? Um, if you have a format full of decks that are all like, uh, you know, your good matchups are 60-40, your bad matchups are like 45-55, then you're piloting, you know, a pretty powerful deck. That's what we see a lot with the likes of Scouts and Talia Ziggs and all the decks that we're carrying in Gauntlet. Nothing is a uh, overwhelmingly... Uh, ridiculous win rate, uh, but you don't just like absolutely annihilate any of the matches. Uh, that's what we would call be something being polarized, right? Is to where uh, if your deck has a 55% win rate, it's probably got, you know, a 60-40 match and then it's got, uh, you know, like a 50-50 match. However those maths work out, the numbers are really close together. But if you take a deck like the Sun Disk, and how does it get a 50% win rate? It's because it beats Ezreal Caitlyn 80% of the time and it loses to Victor 80% uh, uh, of the time. And so uh, it's just where you get into the, like a really, really, really rock, paper, scissors kind of format as to where the, the matchups don't matter that much. Uh, and it's just a lot of trying to get paired against the the right decks. Now that that's a valid strategy. Sometimes I know I've I've run into uh, tournaments. I've even taken this strategy myself, as to where there's a deck that's like ten percent of the meta. Uh, you can't beat it, but you're really strong against everything else in the format. And so as you go to a tournament, if you can just dodge that 10% matchup, if you play against it zero or one times, you're probably in a pretty good space. If you get, you know, a low roll in your matchups and have to play against it two or three times and your day's over. Uh, that, that's what it feels like with the Sun Disk, and it's really unfortunate that it spreads itself out so hard into the format. Like, if this was a deck like uh, the other decks I hate, like the Ramp decks, uh, they don't see nearly as much play because they aren't a fucking meme. And so like that's that that's what happens when, you know, the memes pick up and Riot can't spell stuff and you start seeing Shuriman cars and people wanting to play Mono Sharima and the deck turning into a meme and then it actually becoming a real deck one day due to uh, some changes in the format. And uh, I think it's left us in kind of a a really awkward spot these days as to where uh, Ezreal, Caitlyn and all the control decks really can't beat the sun disc and you could see that quite easily here um, and it really throws a wrench into a lot of the format also it throws a wrench into the style of uh, decks you can play right if you want to play uh, say like elites uh, I'm not sure in what format elites have been good but uh, they they win by putting stats on the board yetis wins by putting stats on the board uh, even things like uh, spiders where you say like a, a go wide spiders deck. These are all decks that win by having a ton of stats on the board and just get completely annihilated by the sun disc, right? Uh, you have to be doing the, the strategy we talk about of through it with overwhelm, around it with elusive, or attack twice with rallies. Those are the only ways that you can beat the sun disc. And so it, it is like unfortunate that that deck's running around. Uh, it really puts a hamstring into a lot of the other decks uh, that are potentially there in the format. Uh, and I don't think it would be. Uh, uh, such a big deal and such a problem if it wasn't such a meme deck uh, because of the, you know, Sherryman cars and all of the uh, ideals that you see with it on Reddit.
But uh, as far as this deck is concerned, uh, it's still, you know, good. It's still a reasonable deck to take into best of three. Uh, it's not a particularly good ladder climber because uh, you're going to run into the sun disc so frequently. But uh, it does have a, you know, kind of a place in this world. And, and you know, does Rocket Barrage belong in this deck? Not really. Uh, <laughs> you know, uh, I could see some metas to where you might want it. Uh, but uh, you, you typically find yourselves playing decks like... Uh, Kind of like back at the beginning of of Rune Terra, people would basically just play control decks that that had every every card in the format that gained health, every card with drain, like all of the withering whales and all of the likes of those, uh, and that was their way to try and combat uh, the aggro decks of the format. And so, if you're like really trying to go over the top with AOEs, then sure you might find some kind of usage out of Rocket Barrage. It might find some kind of fringe space to where you want to play it in the main deck, but uh, it, it's probably uh, going to get outclassed by a, a variety of cards and not something that you are actively looking to put out here. But uh, nonetheless, you know, we gave it a go. We turned it premium. We left our mark on the game. Hey, in turn, a five, we did it. You did it. I did it. Maybe Deadbolt Doris did it. Maybe that, that dev that retired did it. You know, it's all, it's a circle of life. We all got it done here, and I'm uh, very proud and impressed uh, with what we made happen. <laughs> but nonetheless, that is going to do it for us today. I hope everyone out there uh, learned how to make the Rocket Barrage Premium. Maybe learned a thing or two along the way and had a good time watching. Uh, this is Bust, and we thank you for being here. <laughs>